It is two hours and nine minutes into the 30th day of May, uh, 2021. On the ride home, I couldn't remember whether it was the 29th or the uh, 28th. And uh, apparently it was the 29th, because uh, right now it's the 30th, and uh, <laughs> just about uh, two hours and ten minutes into the day. Anyways, I just finished watching uh, Family Five vlogs. That's as far as I've gotten on the YouTube show for today. Uh, no, I didn't do any binge watching. I just sort of, uh, stroll, went along the standard path. And, uh, I, I, I'll probably end up doing a, a more binge watching tomorrow of, uh, the Sister Forever, no, which is now Family Forever vlog. Oh, Today is, well, the whole, yeah, you Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and probably this now, is been a burnout day, uh, or burnout weekend. It's been a, uh, I've been in burnout mode. Uh, all that means a lot of sleeping. Uh, the research work has fallen off for the last couple of days. It's still going, it's just not at the pace it was. Before, before you go full out, it's, it's as you're watching TV, as you're doing this, or as you're doing that. Uh, you've got your, well, for me, I've got my tablet open and uh, I'm reading through different materials. Uh, right now, I'm doing a comparison between, um, I'm in the middle of doing a comparison between uh, Voltaire and Leibniz. And I'll also add in, uh, at a certain point, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Descartes and uh, Descartes. Newton, and at the end, I'll do uh, Planck, and just sort of, sort of map out where things went, is who were the atheists, who were not the atheists, uh, the, go over the atheist argument, show you why, that it, it, what's, what's happened since Voltaire, with the Voltaire argument, uh, that you have, science has become a religion, there's the, the so-called facts, are no longer facts, or rather they're simply beliefs. Mm -hmm. And this has to do with, the the, the 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 reality of this has nothing to do with, it's not a, not a religious argument. This is within physics itself. That physics evolves to the point, same thing with calculus, this is the whole point of the fundamentals of calculus. It, and it ends up, Calculus deals with the uncertainty of reality, that, that reality is always uncertain. And so that you can never state that there isn't a God, you can state there's probably not a God. That's a, that's one thing you can do, you can say the probability, but you can't come up with a degree of certainty because, and then use calculus to prove this because calculus is not a proof of anything, it's simply an approximation. That's the whole, the full fundamentals of calculus, which is the limit. Is the approximation within a, uh, within an asymptotic curve? That's the fun fundamentals of calculus. So you cannot use calculus to prove something that is definitive. You can get the approximation, but you cannot get the definitive. Uh, and this is what Voltaire does. Voltaire brings out the definitive, and a lot of people who follow Voltaire bring out the definitive. But the thing is, the definitive was never real. It was it, it was simply an illusion, uh, and they convinced of this. They convinced themselves of this with the, with their mathematics, and so what happens is that to do to go through and sort of strain out what was what you have to go through the various different philosophies, the the, the different philosophers who were involved, who were key in this, and sort of sort of do a comparison between the two. But this takes a, an enormous amount of time, and of course, getting it out to the public. You know, in terms of the amount of time you're spending on it, you're getting out fractions of information at a time, and it takes two to three weeks for people to pick things up. I mean, why is QLARP moving along so slowly? Because uh, you put it out there, it takes people. And I, this is what I've looked at uh, in terms of my overall reach. Uh, it takes people co close to uh, three weeks to really pick things up that I put out, and because they're not always doing something in terms of being perused. Uh, they, they, it's not always in their feed, sometimes they miss things, and they'll get something at some point in time later on, so you have to allow uh, two, three weeks to go by before you start posting things again, 
So, in other words, you have to give yourself time in terms of your posting if you're going to be posting information. Uh, now, there are ways to tweak this. There are ways, ways to sort of move around this. Uh, but the thing is, is that the reality is you, you're looking at, in terms of your, your of your progress, you're looking at two to three weeks out in terms of uh, what you're going to be doing. And and every once in a while, every, you get these points where I get just too tired and uh, you can't push at the pace you've been pushing at. And it's time to back off and get some extra sleep. Well, which is, at the same time, not really restful because you're still doing the exploration uh, within your sleep as well because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lucid dreamer. I, I know what I'm dreaming about. I'm aware of my dreams. So I am as conscious in my dreams as I am here. And I'm also as conscious, conscious within the dreams that the physics within the dream, how things work within the dream, is fundamentally different than from what, what you get here. There is, a, there is some comparison, but there's not a lot of comparison. Anyways, uh, I think I'm going to leave that here for now, and uh, we'll move on. Uh, probably see you in, sometime in the morning. Uh, I've got more, medit more, more meditation to do tomorrow. We'll see when, how that ends up working out. Because uh, i got to schedule that in. i got to get some gaming. And by 1 o'clock I have to be at my parents' house because uh, we're going to have another family thing again. And that will probably take us to about close to 8, 9 o'clock in the evening. Uh, so I'm going to leave that here. And I will see you in a couple hours. Well, uh, it is... Uh, 21 hours and uh, 7 minutes into the 30th day uh, of May. Uh, we're back. We have uh, Yaoi Vlogs queued up. and uh, We're going to start our YouTube stroll. Uh, it is the stroll. And it's, it's casual. It's like going around and visiting people. You go around and, you know, see what's what, what who's, out, who's out there and what they'll put up. And, and you visit for a bit and you move on to the next. And I've got a good enough path that... Uh, this becomes my reality TV. This is my Netflix. This is um, my TV uh, in many ways. I do have the cartoons I go off to every once in a while. Depends on how much uh, time I'm watching TV. But lately I haven't been watching as much TV as I uh, thought I would be. But uh, there's an, an enormous amount to read. There's an enormous amount to study. Uh, I found some very good uh, sources that will sort of help me connect. Uh, Voltaire to Planck uh, and sort of give a good overview of uh, what actually occurred in history to bring us to the point we are at today. Uh, a, a large chunk of where we are today in terms of how we see things uh, is heavily influenced by the things that occurred in the past and a lot of times uh, that information isn't readily available, it's not given to us and we have to be more, uh, let's say, circumspect about things, more aware that things go on beyond what we typically understand. This, this is kind of what the journey is about, is seeing the more, exploring the more, uh, finding out the things that maybe no one has ever seen before, or, uh, or hasn't seen in a long time, and it has been this stuff. Uh, this is typically <laughs> going up, up into your into your attic and seeing the stuff that was uh, just shoved up there and maybe 10, 20 years ago, maybe from your grandparents that had, had stuff like that. And, well, what was it like back then? What what did they go through? What did they experience? And you can sort of see all this stuff uh, within the attic. And there's stuff that's cataloged, the stuff that's known. And there's a lot of stuff that's unknown. That, not because someone tossed it over, they just simply forgot. And so there is that aspect of simply forgetting uh, what had been there before and how things uh, really kind of evolved. And this is sort of the same thing with the history, you know, globally. And the thing is, you, you work from your backyard on out. And so this is kind of what I'm doing is work, I work from physics on, on out. I use the methodologies of astronomy, of cataloging my observations, uh, and then once I've cataloged enough observations, you go back to try to index them and sort of see what patterns there are and what 
things may you, you maybe uh, maybe better understand because you have multiple examples of them. So if you can't watch something, you know, let's say over a million years, or well, is there a star that's that's a little older than the, 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 than than other stars? Do you, uh, do you notice a difference in the stars from birth to death? Is there a, a star, are there stars that are there from birth to death? Uh, if you can find that and you put this in your catalog, then you now have an opportunity to sort of go out and f explore the life of a star. You know what it might be like. You're not going to get everything, but you could get a, a good idea of, of, of what's going to happen. This, these include su supernova is the death of a star. Black hole is, is another form, but it, it typically comes out of these very la large stars uh, that produce a supernova, very bright supernovas. And then when they collapse back in on themselves, uh, they perform a black hole. Uh, there are, we know that there we found uh, nurseries, stellar nurseries. So you can put that in there. You can put out, uh, uh, you know, see how a star would possibly go into death. Oh, I've certainly seen some of that possibility with our own star. Uh, it's understanding how uh, something like the Cat's Eye Nebula, which is a very amazing uh, um, object to look at, how would that something like that ever form? And doing some of the solar observations I've been doing over the last uh, couple months or so, I've begun to understand how that's possible. And people are understand, well, how does uh, something like like, like, uh, like Pluto, how does Pluto become a planet? How do, it's, its orbit is so far off. Well, there's mechanisms within the sun that you see in terms of solar observation that could produce a planet like Pluto. There are events that occur. It just, it, but if you're sitting there working on data alone and not looking through the telescope, then you're not going to see these things. You, you, it's it's going to go beyond you. You're going to, because you, 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 in terms of of seeing what's in the data, a large chunk of these events are lost within the data. They're not necessarily there, you know, front and present. So the question is, you know, what's next, and you know, where are things are going to go from here on out, and. What I'm doing in terms of my study, in terms of Voltaire, and this includes Lionel LeBron, because Lionel LeBron falls on that track there. Uh, I didn't expect him to, but he did. Uh, I have to readjust my notebooks. I have to uh, make sure that they're, that they're large enough to, to bring in uh, some of the new materials I want to work on. And it's going to take me a couple months to, mo to work through these things. And this is how the research goes. Is that there is a point where you are spending it on on, 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 a, on, a, on an area of the puzzle that, that you're trying to put together. There could be you could spend you know two three months at a time working on a particular area. Uh, it's not that other areas aren't being worked on. It just your focus now shifts to this one particular area. And this is uh, this is the track of Lionel LeBron uh, via uh, 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 Voltaire. And so what happens is you now have Lionel LeBron in the same sentence or in the same area of study that uh, Voltaire is, and it gives a longer life in terms of the observation and and discussion, the conversation that we have here uh, about Lionel LeBron, because you see how he he can compare to what Voltaire was doing, and uh, for me, I find that kind of interesting. So. Uh, We'll see where this ends up taking us. Anyways, uh, on to I'm gonna get something to eat and then uh, uh, continue on the uh, path. Well, yeah, the the uh, YouTube scroll. Well, it's not, not that much later. It is uh, 21 hour. Well, it's about uh, 10 hours. Uh, no, 22 hours into the uh, 30th day of May, and I'm back because. My mouth is on fire. <laughs> the chippets help put out some of the flames, but there's still a fair bit of heat going on in there. Um, it is a new uh, type of um, hot wings that I created. Uh, I had hot wings tonight for dinner. And they are uh, Thai chili sriracha based. I make my own sriracha sauce. I do not remove the seeds. So these things are with the seeds. 
I mix it with uh, sweeteners and a good soy sauce. And how you mix it is up to you. Uh, and it just came out amazing. It, the, a good a, an Asian hot sauce is not simply about the heat. The heat comes in, it's supposed to be, you have a lot of flavor with the heat. The heat is hot, it's, it's, it brings tears to your eyes, it clears your sinuses. Yeah, if you, <laughs> no need to intubate with, uh, with C, uh, CVD. Just give him some sriracha, <laughs> give him some hot wings and the whole system will be cleaned out in no time. <laughs> That's if you if you want to clear your sinuses out, you're got a stuffy nose, you got allergies, you got clogged clog sinuses. There's nothing like a good set of Asian hot wings uh, to clear the sinuses. It just, just burns right through you. Uh, you always you always have to have, and I, I do too. I have uh, I've stopped using I've stopped using Kleenex. And I'm now using full size napkins uh, to clear the sinuses when I ever do when I do my hot wings. Uh. And so what's next? Uh, now that the heat has sort of died down a bit, uh, I'm going to do the photographing for of, of the aftermath for uh, Instagram, and I'm going to make. Uh, I probably will end up making. Um, no, I won't do it now. I'll end up uh, doing that later on. I'll end up making uh, the shake again, the uh, the iced tea shake. The new batch of iced tea is ready. It's bubbling and uh, bubbling away and uh, still degassing. These teas ha come come with a warning. If you were on any form of medication, cardiac or otherwise, for you know, for for older people. There is a uh, significant warnings in terms of uh, the ingredients that they interact with uh, certain medications. So, uh, well, it does work out well for myself because I'm not on an anti medication. Uh, I can't give this to any other anyone else because of these sort of interactions. But it, it, these are things you kind of have to get used to. The, 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 the teas, the Chinese teas, the Indian teas. Uh, are not for everybody. It depends on your palate. It depends on your taste. Uh, if you were having a more adventurous palate, then go ahead, try the Indian type, try the uh, uh, the Chinese teas. Uh, it is not simply the leaf. There is a, a mixture of dried ingredients that go in there, including spices. All right, so you have spices, dried fruit, uh, a number of things go into it to sort of make your your tea and my methodology of, of brewing the tea isn't a hot tea it's a cold tea that uh, sets up you have to allow it to set up for uh, about two days right, you, you first leave the water you pour the water into the vessel that's gonna do the uh, brewing You're gonna do the um, the setting up your initial your initial pot and you let the water sit for 24 hours. And you'll see as the water sits for 24 hours, you'll, you'll start bubbles will form in there and you'll see bubbles in there. And that's the water degassing. It actually makes the water a lot softer. And it's better to brew with that than it is to brew in terms of a cold brew than the brew with something that is fresh out of the tap. Uh, then you put your ingredients in and you allow it to sit for, uh, you cover it up. And you allow it to sit for another two days. And then you're done. You pour it off. And now a jug of tea uh, is sitting in the fridge. Nice and cold. And I'm going to make uh, some iced tea with it.